<laughs> Hi, welcome to another edition of Dr. Mel's Message. I have a fabulous author, and this is actually our go around round two. We don't know what happened to the first one, but you know what? Second time's a charm, and so here we go. But I have J.A. Carlton with me. I call her Jill, but her pen name is J.A. Carlton. And her book, Your Life, Your Destiny, Your Choice, at the Crossroads of the Destiny of Choice, is just a fabulous book. And I want to get into the meat of it because I, luckily I've had a chance to actually read it this time. So I'm really excited about that. And without further ado, I'm going to welcome Jill onto the program. And nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Dr. Mel. Thank you so much for having me. Well, hopefully this one will go a little smoother than the last one. Had, <laughs> if, if there was a gremlin, we had 10 of them. I swear. It was just something. And well, that's so far for life and destiny and choices, right? Exactly. <laughs> right into it. It's like, okay, now what? Uh, but let's talk a little bit about your book. It's a fascinating book. And I want people to know just a little bit about it and what it means to you and where you see the book going. Well, where I see it going is wherever it needs to go to help people find their genuinely authentic selves. We have so many people trying to sell authenticity these days. And they are couching everything in external trappings. And the real issues about attaining happiness, about attaining fulfillment, that all comes from within. It doesn't come from the clothes that you wear. It doesn't come from keeping up with the Joneses or one-upping the Joneses. It comes from starting off by accepting you for who you are in this moment and knowing that if you want to change in any direction, good, bad, or indifferent, that that is your choice, that you have that power to do that. You know, it's easy enough to say you have the power to change. But what does it really take to initiate, uh, initiate full change into somebody? Soul searching. A lot, a, a lot of um, kind of going in and facing some of the worst aspects of yourself. Uh, if, you know, in, in the book, I actually address the idea that you're always going to have detractors, people that want you to stay locked in that little closet, that little character that they keep you in because of their expectations. So when you are able to face the things that they will throw at you to knock you down, to, to, to stop you from making positive changes, when you're willing to face and accept those things about your past and about yourself, they have no power over you anymore. You take back your power by knowing who you are, what motivates you, and sometimes why. Sometimes just knowing that there is a why a little bit down the road, even if you don't know anything but the feeling that you have right now, the why will come as long as you're moving with respect to yourself and not falling into the expectations or maintaining them from yeah. somebody else. Now, I know that a lot of people carry around baggage. I mean, we all do. I oh, mean, God, yeah. Everybody has a closet full of packed suitcases. <laughs> this, <laughs> yes. Uh, this actually goes beyond unpacking a suitcase. This goes on internal self-reflection and change internally, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And uh, do you have to be motivated to do this or can you just pick it up by reading the book or what? Maybe a little bit of either. Um, obviously, having a deep motivation really helps. If you're in a bad situation in your life, and let's just use the uh, all-time example of being in an abusive relationship, whether it's emotional abuse, intellectual abuse, physical abuse, if you know you're in that relationship and you recognize it and you recognize that you have to get out, that's your first step. This book can help you build the tools inside of yourself, that, that protected area of you that says, I'm worth growing and getting beyond this. I am worth saying no to abuse. So um, it, it's just, it's, it, it just, 
motivation again is key, but you can pick up little tips and pointers along the way. There's 10 primary tips, as I call them throughout the book, that kind of help you see yourself in a new light. And even if they bring in little bits of change saying, oh, hey, wait a minute. I know where they're coming from. They're coming from a place where they don't want me to change because it's uncomfortable for them. Okay, I can sit back and I can accept where they are, but respect myself enough to say, I'm not going to let them stop me. So if that makes sense. And no, it makes a lot of sense. And we did discuss this earlier. It goes back to the old saying that if you don't love yourself, how do you expect anybody else to love you? Yes, that's 100% it. Um, and, and my primary philosophy is that you have one person that's with you from the moment you're born until the day you die. One person that stands by you, and that's you. And if you can't respect the person you're looking at in the mirror, then you're losing out on a real good friend and a real good companion, someone to support you in all your endeavors throughout your life. What can a person do that feels really, you know, like glum and knows I need to make a change and I really don't know how to start? What would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to say, to, to ask what kind of change do they want? Do they want um, a better job? Do they want more money? Because that usually comes with a better job. Do they want a better wardrobe? Do they want a better lover? Do they want a better friend? And then to find out inside what they would expect that person to be or that thing to be and see what they need to do to meet that expectation. How they so need to change. Expectations are the ones that they're putting on themselves, not what they think other people want them to be, correct? Exactly. Exactly. My expectation for me is that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to do the absolute best that I can in that morning, in that day, to do my job right, to help people as much as I possibly can. I don't believe in excellence. I mean, um, I'm sorry, I do believe in excellence. Excellence is the, um, it is the standard for that moment, for that day. There is no such thing as perfection. Perfection is an unattainable goalpost. It's always moving. Excellence is something you can attain on the daily basis. And yes, it's fluid, but life is fluid. If you can't roll with it and flow with it, then you get stuck into these habits that basically destroy who we can be for ourselves and when we're good for ourselves we're good for the people around us and so it really just does come down to making choices that are right for you yes yeah it, it does and again the, those 10 tips will help in such a way i hope anyway um as to kind of give not just examples perhaps things that I've gone through, um, all these have been time tested by myself. So, and, and thankfully I consider myself a relatively happy person. So my happiness formula being, if you're basically happy with who you are 70% of the time, <laughs> you're right there, you're on it. Um, but it, it, I provide examples of how to look at things, different shifts in perception that lead to a shift in perspective overall. Now that's, that's really great right there because you're right. You are who you perceive you to be. And if you're putting yeah. negativity, that's what you're going to get out. Yeah. That's so so many of us treat ourselves. We talk to ourselves like we're the enemy. We're not. Would you ever talk to your best friend and say, well, you suck. You're not worth it. <laughs> Because if you would, maybe you want to rethink that relationship. You know, instead, most of the time you would say to your best friend, if they're doing something that is deleterious to their existence, you might say, you're wrong. You need to look at things a little bit more deeply or what have you. You need help. Treat yourself the same way, with the same respect, with the same love. And people just don't do that today. 
I mean, they, no. they don't. It, like, they think their happiness is because of what they can wear or what maybe somebody can say to them. And they truly mm -hmm. can't find happiness in being by themselves. I've seen that in people. Yeah. And uh, as much as we all use social media, social media is a big driver with a lot of despair. Um, social media is built actually to provide serotonin boosts every time we get a like, every time we get a thumbs up on something or a response to something. And it's imperative to remember that social media, as wonderful as it can be for bringing people together with like ideas, that it's not sitting in a room with a friend most of the time. It's, you know, it's a conversation, but it's a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a friendly conversation. It's not a friendship conversation. It's an acquaintance type of relationship, right. if you're lucky enough to have that. Yeah, there's no so, real meat into a conversation. Right. So, you know, how can you, I don't know how many characters you're allowed on, on Twitter now or anything like that. And yeah, I'm not going to call it by that other letter. Sorry, don't care. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many characters you're allowed, but let's just say if it's under a thousand, you really can't have much of an in-depth conversation. No, you really can't. <laughs> so, I agree. 100%. Yeah. For those of you that are just joining us, I'm speaking with J.A. Carlton, and she has a magnificent book called Your Life, Your Destiny, Your Choice, At the Crossroads, The Destiny of Choice. And it is about choices we make sometimes, and it's as simple as waking up and sometimes smiling at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what, you can do good today. You know, because if, if you're not going to believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? Exactly. So thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... I was lucky enough that my mother taught me a lot of things. Um, one of the things that she taught me, and I know you're going to know this one, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, gosh, yes. You know what that taught me? Same thing it taught everybody else. Screw that. What are you doing? Because I'm going to do that. Right. We learn by example. We don't learn necessarily by words. We learn by example. So if you're... Okay guides in life are providing a bad example of behavior or if you're providing a negative example of behavior to your children and you wonder where they got it look in the mirror because mm -hmm. they're not going to listen to your words unless of course they're negative words but they're going to look at your actions mm -hmm. and those actions speak louder than those words and it oh, has I never been truer no, and I agree with that 100%. And, you know, my mother taught me a lot, too. And one of the things she always, you know, said to me is, you'll never get in trouble for what you don't say. It's only what you do say. Yes. Oh, and yeah. A lot of truth into that. And, <laughs> oh, yes. And I think that's, you know, when it comes back to your book, you know, your life, your destiny, your choice, it is about the choices we make. And it is mm -hmm. my life. And it's nobody else that's in control of my life but me. Yeah. And I've got to be responsible, you know, for myself. And nowadays, people aren't looking at being responsible for themselves. No, no, sadly, they're not. Um, but again, this is part of the programming that they've undergone. When the parents, and, and I'm talking particularly about the helicopter parents, not necessarily the free range ones, because I was a free range kid. You know, but the parents... When they're guiding every breath and that a child takes and every second of their day, they're not giving that child the capacity for autonomy. They're not allowing them to make these early mistakes right. that roll out into adulthood that can become catastrophic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to love your child, putting the training wheels on their bike and running alongside them until they're ready for you to take them off, that's great. But you're not the one sitting in the seat riding the bicycle and holding them on your lap. You can't do that. Um, so again, it comes down to that programming and it's so generational. Uh, my generation has a huge amount of gratitude to owe to the boomers before us. I'm an Xer. The boomers, 
(laughs) (laughs) The boomers, they get a lot of flack, but what the, you know, the, the Zs and the millennials and these alphas, what they don't understand is that World War II, baby, men were out fighting and guess what? The women for the first time in literally centuries left the house to go get jobs in STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, math. They're the ones who built the planes. They're the ones who developed things. They're the ones who fixed the engines. And we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. So when World War II was over and they came back into the household, most of the time it was because they wanted to. They had that choice as well as the expectation from their husband, but eh, some sort of compromise there too. But they led the way for my generation to say, ooh, I have an option to go out and work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And that expectation changed all through the 60s and into the 70s. And then it resulted in the 80s. Well, let's not, I I don't want to go back to the 80s. Great music, but let's kind of leave that there. (laughs) Well, Jill, you have been just an absolute pleasure. I I love your book. I love the concept of it because it puts yourself back in control of your own destiny. And I think the more that we do this, the better off collectively as society we're all going to be. So thank you again for this enlightening book. Uh, Thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Mel. It's it's been a joy. I hope we get a chance to come back together again soon. And uh, just again, I've been speaking with Jay Carlton, Jill, and her book, Your Life, Your Destiny, Your Choice at the Crossroads, The Destiny of Choice is available over on Amazon and Kindle and paperback and other online real tech. So grab a hold of this book. It's going to open your eyes in a positive way. Well, thank you so much. Thank you again. (laughs) See you next time.